Deuteronomy chapter 25. And what we're going to be looking at, the people, the Israelites are going into the land. We're looking at their law in the land. Leviticus is given the land to the, to the is given the law to those that were in the wilderness. But these are the Israelites are going into the land, and there's various different laws. Not one chapter for a while will be one specific case. You're going to deal with multiple cases of the law. So if there be a controversy between men, and they come unto the judgment that the judges may judge them. And they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. A lot of judgments in America, the wicked are justified and the righteous are put to condemn condemnation. So that's wrong. And it shall be if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten. Alright, so one of the penalties of the law was to be beaten and this it was in the early parts of America. In England. Will be a public beating that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face, the judge's face, according to his fault by a certain number. So there would be in the law prescribed how many beatings to the specific crime that was done. Forty stripes he may give him. And not exceed. So there's no more. Oh, there's no 41 stripes laid upon him. 40 is the maximum. If he should exceed and beat him above these with many stripes. Then thy brother shall seem vile unto thee. So if you just keep beating him and beating him and beating him. He's going to be looking like. It's going to be, you're going to feel sorry for him. Oh, look at all that, what's done for him. Now, Isaiah 52, verse 14. Isaiah 52, verse 14. Let's see what happened with Jesus. Now, the law says over 40 stripes, no. 41 to infinity, no. You're going to beat him so that he is so vile, so torn, he cannot live. All right? Isaiah 52, 14. As many were astonished at thee, his visage, this is Jehovah's servant, verse 13, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. That's Jesus. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of man. So he sprinkled many nations. That's Jesus. They went above and beyond the forty stripes. They violated the law. And then he had his time with the Roman soldiers, which were not panty weeks. They were brute strong men. Psalms 129, verse 3. I think these are interesting verses to look at. Psalms 129, verse 3. So, in the life of Jesus, they broke the law. They brought to him a woman caught in adultery, but they didn't bring the man. They beat Jesus so far much with the, with the law. And it says right here, you go to Psalms 129 verse 3 and it says, And it shall be if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten. Now tell me why Jesus Christ was, <coughs> was worthy to be beaten. When he was proclaimed by the Roman government three, four times, and with uh, Herod, and then with uh, um, the dying thief. There's no fault in him. With Judas, I have betrayed the innocent blood. Why was he beaten? Read Isaiah 53. So, uh, Psalms 129, verse 3. The plowers plowed upon my back. They made long their furrows. What's those furrows? That's the whips. 
When Jesus and the Holy Spirit writes to us what Jesus' back looks like, it is described as a picture as a farmer out there with a blade from an oxen. And you dig deep into the dirt. It's kind of interesting. Now with that, we got to go back to Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter, chapter 50, verse 6. Isaiah 50, verse 6. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off my off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. So what's the law say over here? And we're not done. Well, let me read to you. It says, And it shall be if the wicked man, Jesus was never wicked, he's sinless, be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down. And what we just read in Isaiah 50, Jesus lied down and gave his back to hear Go at it. And we're here. Let's go to Isaiah 53. The suffering servant. And we'll start in verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow. Acquainted with grief. We hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did extreme, esteem him. Stricken. Smitten. Of God. Afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes. It's all prophesied. The idea you get is when they took Jesus and whipped him by describing as a farmer going out in the fields, they just went at it. They were so envious and so angry, they just kept doing it. They violated the scripture. Or maybe they did do it 40 times. And they did it with full force and full power. If they did it 40 times like the law prescribed, then man, they went at it without mercy. And if they just kept doing it, they violated the law. Now let's look at 2 Corinthians 11, 24. 2 Corinthians 11, 24. And let's look at the Apostle Paul. We'll start in verse 23. This is Paul. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. What are you talking about, Paul? In prison more frankly. In depths off. Of the Jews five times received 40 stripes. Save one. 195 stripes he took in the period of his lifetime. Five different times. Four times they gave him 40. And then one time they gave him 39. Do you realize what Paul would have looked like when he removed his, his upper covers of his clothes? When the Bible, when we go back over here, Deuteronomy says, you're not to be him so much that he be vile to you. I bet you Paul is thankful he's going to get a new body in heaven. He's not going to carry those bruises of the word of God. Now, 
We know the handprints are there. We know the hole in the side is there. We know that the hole in the feet are there. And there's possibility that, that those thorns that made the marks on his, on his head are going to be there. What do you think those stripes are going to be? I think they're going to be there too. I think you're going to see his back all bruised up. Or you ever see somebody who, who's had major scar tissue work on them? from an injury and accident they've had in their lifetime. You can't but help notice. There's some people, I mean, you don't want to look at them, but it's like, wow, buddy, what'd you go through? And you're trying not to look. So when we see Jesus, and yet we're not going to remember sins. Yeah, but those holes, those wounds, we're still going to remember something. Verse 4, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. And the ox is likened to a minister, a preacher, a man that's taking care of his his people. And it says, you know what? If he's doing the work of the people, Paul speaks, I think this is Timothy, I don't have the cross-reference, the ox knows his owner. The ox is worthy of his hire. He's going to do work. Let him bow down and eat of what he's working. In other words, you got a faithful minister, a preacher, a pastor, your church, feed him. And it's amazing how we see that right after the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ on top. And yet there's many pastors out there that put themselves on top and over Jesus. And haven't suffered. If brethren dwell together. And one of them die. And have no child. The wife of the dead. The widow. Shall not marry without. Unto a stranger. Now that stranger is there. Is not a Gentile. It can be a Gentile. But it's not a Gentile. It's somebody who's not in the family of that man. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. Now, aren't you glad you're under grace? How would you, I mean, just look at it right now. If your husband were to die, the law says, I mean, how many seven day Adventists do this? If your husband dies, you got to go to his brother and he's got to mate with you if you don't produce a child. It would be like, you know, the, 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 the son comes home and says, Dad, I'm getting married. And the brother would be like, uh, who is she? In case, in case you die. And the wife would be, well, what's your family like? What's your brother like? In case you die. That's serious business. Marriage is serious in the Bible. And it shall be that the firstborn, which she beareth, shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead that his name be not put out of israel it's all the name and if the man like not to take his brother's wife then let him then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say my husband's brother refuses to raise up unto his brother a name in israel he will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. He's not doing this. He's not doing what he's supposed to do. He's not obeying the law. And there's no question here. What, what if the guy's already married? <laughs> and we won't go there, but you'll find this in Genesis 38 verse 9. Onan. That's a very serious case. And you find it Ruth chapter 4 verse 7. When Boaz talks to the nearest kinsman, he's like, I can't do this. I'll mar my inheritance. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak unto him. And if he stand to it, yeah, that's true. And say, I like not to take her. And there's no excuse why. In Ruth chapter 4, he has another inheritance. 
Then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders, and loose his shoe from off his foot, and spit in his face, humiliation, and shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto the man that will not build up his brother's house. And his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him that has shoe loose. All right, let's go to Ruth 4, 7. Let's see how well the law was kept. <laughs> you think it was kept? Ruth chapter 4, verse 7. We'll start in verse 6. Verse 6 will bring us to where we are in Deuteronomy chapter 25. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mark my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. I can't do it. So we just read in Deuteronomy. Now this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning change, charging. Changing. That's, I marked the Bible. That's the first and last time that shows up there. That's why I can't see it. For to confirm, that's the first time that shows up, all things. A man plucked off his shoe. What did the law say? Where's Ruth? There's no Ruth. And gave it to his neighbor. Says so she loosed his shoe. And this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, Buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. Where is Ruth? And it goes on. That's the receipt that Boaz gets Ruth and the family. Well, they've really gone a long way away from the law. Ruth is a book that is written during the time of the judges. And the judges speaks about, let me see, at the last page. Which was right on a... Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. <laughs> there was no spitting in, in the book of Ruth, and there was no Ruth to do what the Bible, the law said. Kind of interesting. Could it be because she was Moabite and not Jewish? Well, her husband was Jewish, so it would have to have been followed by the law. It says stranger. It's just. And then, like you said, when we see Jesus' time, the law has just been so relaxed. All right, she's caught in adultery. The law said both the man and the woman. Where's the man? They weren't following the law, and they're not following the law today. When they do their Passover, they're definitely totally wrong. Verse number 9. Then thou shalt... Then shall his brother, okay, we already did that. So verse 10, and his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him that has his shoe loose. When men strive together, one with another, they're fighting, and the wife of the one draws near to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smited him, she's coming to the rescue, and put it forth her hand and taketh him by the secret. Oh, -oh. she's a dirty bull. Then thou shalt cut off her hand, thine eye shall not pity her. And the question is, the thing that with the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, if that's not your spouse, man or woman, keep your hands off their private areas. And even if it's defense, take a frying pan and bang the guy over the head. <laughs> so that, that's the lesson there. Thou shalt not have in thy bag, there's the first time bag shows up, what's the reference to that? Divers weights and great and small. Today we would call it a box and we would call it metric and standard. And then hex and hawks and whoever kind of 40,000 screwdrivers you got to buy to take off one headlamp of your car. God says that's wrong. And then the situation here is you're cheating somebody too. You're not giving them the full value of what they're buying and you're not giving them the few, the full value of what you're buying. You're not to cheat. 
the brethren. Thou shalt not have in thy house divers measures, a great and a small. Now that doesn't mean you don't have a, a tablespoon, a half tablespoon, a quarter tea. That means you just don't have a tablespoon in whatever the metric version is. And then you don't have a Swedish, you know, one measurement. But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God give thee. Oh, there's another condition for the law. If you have the right measurements and you do not swindle somebody, you can get greater and longer life in the land. Well, and that's the thing too. It's not. That's not funny because God would. God would make it a time. You know what? You're cheating somebody. I'm going to have you find out. I hate to say it, but there was one of the karate kids. Three. One of the guys in in the in the town was swindling everybody. And Mr. Karate Kid comes up and he breaks it, finds out it's styrofoam. And everybody starts chasing the guy. I hate to bring that in the movie, but that's a perfect illustration. God will find you out. Be sure your sins will find you out. And then everybody in that area, in that land, is not going to be too happy. And I am told one thing, and I don't know if it's the truth or not, but I was told that even the mafia were afraid of the Jewish mothers. They did not mess with them. And Jews have a temper. Haven't we been studying enough of their tempers? Every time they get angry, they pick up sticks. They pick up rocks. Moses got angry. He took that rod. He slammed that rock not once. He slammed it twice. So, <clears throat> you were in trouble. And they probably stoned you for it. For all that do such things and all that do unrighteously, it's unrighteous, are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So, cheating someone with weight has as much weight, I'm not, no pun intended, has much as weight as somebody who murders somebody or commits adultery. Or is proud. So when you go to the grocery store and you buy something that's got a tray and they don't measure that tray, God calls that an abomination. I remember the grocery stores first came out. I was working. We used to have brand new salad bars. And people would come in and say, well, you know what? You are charging me for the container. And then they came up with tear weight. And the law is supposed to be when you buy meat at the meat department, that tray that comes with it is supposed to be pre-weighed to be taken off. If you buy a two-pound chicken, say two pounds, number, that two pounds is not supposed to include that, that tray. That's called tear weight. And if you take that chicken home, and that chicken is not two pounds, and you find out that that weight of that tray is included, that's against the law. If you go to a gas pump, you'll see a state sticker on there. And it'll have some kind of, you know, measurement, diagrams like that. There to make sure that that gasoline, you get one gallon for one gallon, which they don't do often. You get shortchanged a gallon on the gas pump, you have the right to call the, your state representative. I uh, forget what they, it's something, balances and stuff like that, according to the Bible. And you can play and say, this gas station, I did not get a gallon. And here's here's the receipt, and here's my bucket. It's an abomination. You don't hear that preached out of the pulpit today. You know what the safe thing was in the old time when there were monarchs in Europe? It would be called a baker's dozen. You would make one extra bread uh, muffin, muffin cookie. Uh, cupcake, cookie, something, just in case one of those other ones didn't have the right size. Because a king would chop your head off if he didn't get the right amount of cookie. It's a serious business. It comes out of the Bible. So, you're, when you're giving somebody something, give them a little extra. But that's not American business today. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way, 
when you come out of the when you come forth out of Egypt, that is Exodus 17 8. How he met thee by the way and smote the hindermost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee. So when Israel's marching out of Egypt, the old the, 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 the brittle are in the back of the row. And then Lemonic took an took an offer in that. Lions do that. Lions will sit all in the in a plain area and they will watch that herd of water buffalo or whatever's there. And how they do it, I don't know, but it's not evolution, it's God. They will watch those animals, they will all together communicate somehow, I don't know, without cell phones. And they will mark the feeble animal of that clan, the youngest, the youngest brand, youngest. herd, youngest one. Or oldest, I guess. And they will all attack that one. And the lion is likened to the devil in the Bible. And the lion is likened to Satan taking out the weaker ones. And the greatest illustration you see that is with the Jehovah Witnesses finding a young Christian and snagging them in. Because people get people saved today and they don't raise them up. They don't take care of them. We got one guy right now. You can't force him, but we're trying to give him stuff, trying to encourage him. But you can't force him because force is, I'm not going to sing 26 stanzas for him to get out and do something because then he's not going to get a reward. He's got to do it of his own will. So in Lemonek, verse 18, how he met thee by the way and smote the hindermost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou was faint and weary, and he feared not God. Now, verse 18 is quite interesting. Why didn't you help those feebles? Why didn't you put them on your wagons? Why didn't you carry them? And our nation's doing that with our veterans and our old people. Just put them off somewhere. Just let them go out in the woods and live and leave us alone. And the cold air and the lack of nursing and the lack of care just they swindle away and die. That's wrong. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God has given thee rest from all thy enemies round about. In the land, there's that land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for inheritance to possess it. That thou shalt blot out the remembrance of eliminate from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. And God gives that charge to King Saul and he blows it. And we'll get to that, Lord will, in other studies. I think that's it. That's it. So, we see the Lord's Supper. Uh oh. What do we see here? In chapter 24, verses 20, 21, 22, we see the Lord's Supper, the bread, the anointing, and the wine. And the next verses we see Christ being beaten, being whipped. Isn't that an interesting order? That just happened by chance. And you and my family that's here in this video, when somebody stupidly comes up, the Bible's written by man, you gotta say, wait a minute, come on. Not what we learned tonight. There is the Lord's Supper, and right after the Lord's Supper, the beating. No garden. No garden. It's not in this part. But the supper and then the beating before the Sanhedrin. There it is. Now, what else are you going to do with that? That cannot be. And this would be like 1,480 years before anything that Jesus Christ ever sat down and ate with the disciples. Isn't that interesting? The Bible's great. 